everybody, Sticks here with the Token Minorities, bringing you another deck on Pokemon TCGO, and today I'm bringing you a legacy deck centered around a very old idea. Well, not very old. I mean, it's only been, like, what, four or five years, but either way, in the TCG, that is considered very old, and that is a deck centered around Embor with Inferno Fandango and Magnezone Prime. And before I get into the deck, just a reminder that if you like this video or found it helpful, please leave a like, drop a comment, and maybe subscribe. It helps us out a lot and lets us do more for you guys. Now, as for the question of the day, you might notice that with Embor's Inferno Fandango, as often as you like during your turn, you may attach a fire energy from your hand to one of your Pokemon. Now, if you watched the most recent Legacy video I did, it was around Blastoise and Keldeo, and Blastoise had a very similar ability in Deluge, which was basically Inferno Fandango, but with water energy. My question of the day stems from that, and it is what type of Pokemon would you like to see get a Pokemon with that type of ability? I mean, we've seen Blastoise and Embor both be incredibly meta-defining in their time with that ability. And then the most recent one, I believe, was Magnezone from Breakthrough with, uh, I don't even remember, I think it was Magnetic Circuit or something like that, where you attach as many lightning energy from your hand as possible. Now, many people, when they saw that card, were thinking, oh, this will be just as meta-defining as Embor and Blastoise. And unfortunately, the metagame had become so fast that a Stage 2 without like maxis, archies, or something like Greninja to where you can get all the stage ones out immediately was just way too slow to be particularly viable. So it kind of fell by the wayside. My question is, what type would you like to see get that type of ability? And honestly, I mean, you have the fire types get it, you saw the water types get it, the electric types got it. I think that the next logical one would be grass just i mean grass really doesn't have any true form of energy acceleration i mean you have like the septile with nurture and heal but i mean that's only one energy you have mega septile with jagged saber i mean you really don't have that much grass acceleration going on and i think with cards like mega venusaur and even older cards like trevenant ex the wood blast one I think that those decks could actually become somewhat viable, well, like actually, you know what, they won't become particularly viable because the metagame is still too fast in my opinion for those, but I think that they could still be very good and they could still make a splash if they manage to get some sort of grass acceleration. Then again, I mean that might be a little bit too good because if you combine Forest of Giant Plants with that turn one grass got with that turn one grass stage two and then you just load it up with energy i think that that could be too good which is probably why they haven't done it but either way that'd be something that i'd like to see i'd like to see grass get it and if grass didn't get it i would have to say you know i'd have to say probably darkness but but that's just because i'm a little bit biased towards dark type pokemon just because i think Honestly, I think they're my favorite type in the game. I might have contradicted what I said in an earlier video, but you know what? At this, on this day, at this hour, dark types are my favorite, so I'm just going to roll with it. But anyway, I have rambled for way too long. Let's just go ahead and get right into the deck. Like I said, this is centered around Embor and Magnezone Prime. I just went over what Embor does. What Magnezone Prime does has the magnetic draw pokey power. That is probably the best pokey power in... The history of Pokemon, I mean, I, I think I would go as far as saying that. I mean, that's the best, like, Poke power ability, all of those. Once during your turn, you may draw until you have six cards in your hand. Simple as that. If you have less than six cards in your hand, and you have a Magnezone on the bench, or even active, well, draw until you have six cards. And if you have multiple of, th got multiple of these guys, these abilities stack, so... Once you get like two or three Magazone up, you just start drawing through your deck like crazy and it is absolutely absurd. And its attack isn't even that bad either. Lost Burn for an electric, for a lightning, I'm sorry, not electric. And a colorless does 50 times uh, as many energy that you want to put on into the Lost Zone that were attached to your Pokemon. If that didn't make sense, I'm just going to read the effect straight up because I think what I said was just kind of jumbled uh, heaps of words. Put as many energy attached to your Pokemon as you like in the Lost Zone. This attack does 50 damage times the number of energy cards you put in the Lost Zone that way. No, the energy does not have to be attached to Magnezone Prime. The energy can be attached to any of your Pokemon. So that is 
that's a great attack the only well the big downside is that you have to put it into the lost zone so there is really there's no way to recover it from there so you have to be very very careful with how you use your resources and the obvious combination with embor is that you use inferno fandango to throw a bunch of energy throw a bunch of fire energy onto your field and just lost burn get rid of those guys take a big knockout etc etc and, I mean, I could go into the Pokemon, like, jumping around like I kind of have, but I'll just start from the beginning. We're running one Cleffa because this deck is very clunky. It's running around two Stage 2s. It takes a little while to set up. Cleffa not only gives you a new hand when you attack, it can also stall with Sweet Sleeping Face if you manage to have it stay asleep in the active. So, Cleffa is very, very good in this deck, but I'm only running one just because, I mean, you don't really always want to want to have Cleffa there and if you don't have it until late game well then you don't even need it at all so you don't want to run a bunch of Cleffa to clog things up one is generally good enough especially th with things like Pokemon Collector and Pokemon Communication being able to get them running two Reshiram as kind of a attacker that you can that can attack before you go with Magnezone or if you're facing like a fighting deck or something like that Reshiram is a good backup attacker just because Reshabor was a was an archetype in itself and a very very uh, successful one so I mean if you're running Embor you might as well just throw a couple Reshiram in there with that blue flare attack discard two fire energy attached to this Pokemon I mean it's a very strong attack that you would be a miss not to use in this deck especially with the uh with the options given to you, so a great backup attacker, especially when combined with Embor. Running a 3-1-2 line of Tepig through Embor, just because, I mean, you don't, you really only need one Embor in each match, so you don't need to run like a 3-1-3 like we're running with Magnezone Prime, because Magnezone Prime is usually our main attacker. Embor, you really only need one, and there are no reliable catcher effects in the uh, legacy format right now apart from red signal but at that point you have reshiram against a grass deck and i'll take my odds of that any day of the week and the other catcher effects are just like reversal and catcher both of which rely on coin flips so you really don't have to worry about it that much which is why one embor is usually more than enough then we're running a 313 of magnemite magneton and magnezone just because this guy's our main attacker, this guy can one-shot EXs, all of that, and it's it's really, really cool. I really like this card. I mean, this deck, I'm not going to lie, it's it's very, very clunky, and it takes a little while to set up in the, in the current Legacy game, which can kind of lead to you losing a decent amount. But if you get set up, this definitely becomes a force to be reckoned with and is something to watch out for. So, I mean, if you have the cards, I know Magnezone Prime is very hard to get a hold of, definitely try this out because it is still a very fun deck as for the items we're running one computer search now you might notice i'm not running any ultra balls or junipers in this deck this deck does not like discarding cards at all i mean all almost all of these things are cards that you generally want and you don't like discarding resources in this deck in particular because it generally wants to use all of its resources and it burns through resources very quickly and discarding cards is a very quick way of running out of resources when you don't want that however computer search is too good of a card to pass up on just because it gets you any single card from your deck that you need and with a deck as clunky as this you're normally missing out on like one puzzle piece to get a setup and computer search can just get you that so that's why we're running that we're running two energy retrieval in case you have to discard a couple of the fire energy it's just a quick way to get it back and once you have an embor up just immediately inferno fandango onto your pokemon go from there junk arm i know i said this deck doesn't like discarding cards but junk arm is broken it is busted all of the above i mean it is way too good of a card not to be running in this deck and even though this deck does not like discarding cards like i said junk arm is too ridiculously good to pass up on i'm running one single copy of lost remover because while this deck is very clunky and needs almost all of the cards dedicated to consistency one way that you can get set up and start attacking is to keep your opponent from attacking and keep them from beating you before you get set up lost remover single-handedly can put some matches in your favor like against plasma uh i mean not really the genesect matchup but i mean you can get rid of those plasma energy which could be good you can get rid of like dces on mewtwo's and stuff like that so lost remover is a single copy tech card that can swing some matchups into your favor or at least give you time to set up with your mons before your opponent is able to take them out which is 
invaluable in this deck. It just buys you more time. Running three PCOMs just because PCOM is kind of my way of not using Ultra Ball and not having to discard stuff because more often than not, you're going to have a Pokemon in your hand. And if you have a PCOM, you just play that down, put that Pokemon back into your deck and get the Pokemon that you want. It is excellent, excellent, excellent in this deck. And that is why I'm running it over Ultra Ball because PCOM, you don't have to discard. Granted, you do have to have a Pokemon in your hand. But with like things like Magnetic Draw and stuff like that, you'll normally be able to get that. Running one Reversal, this is a very personal tech card just because I don't like my opponent being able to play down something on the bench with impunity and not worry about it being brought up. If they see me discard or play their Reversal, they'll at least think twice about it. And that's all I want. I just want them to think twice and make sure that they understand the risk of playing something down on the bench against me. Three rare candy because, I mean, two stage twos, you want to get these guys up as quickly as possible. So we want to run a high number of rare candy so that we have it when we need it. Two switch where we're not running any float stones or anything in this deck. So if your opponent Lysander's up in Embor, Embor has a ridiculous four retreat cost. So you don't want to have to pay that. You just go for a switch and go from there. And then junk arm and switch can prevent your opponent from like... Mult, uh, multiple times catching up or reversing up the Embor and trying to stall from there. So that's why we're running two switches instead of one. As for the supporters, we are all running supporters that do not discard cards. We're running Chorus because we usually have a full bench. We're running N just because N's a phenomenal card. We're running three of the Professor Oak's New Theory. This is the supporter card you're going to want to be using more often than not. Just throw the cards back into the deck and draw six while not giving your opponent a new hand to Pokemon Collector. This is an, this is almost a must have turn one, just because it puts the Pokemon, it gets you like two Magnemite and a Tepig or a Cleffa or whatever you need. Pokemon Collector is invaluable in this deck. And then two twins, because this deck is so slow, more often than not, you're gonna be falling behind in the prize count. So having two twins can be there to get you two of whatever card, well, one, two of whatever cards you need in this deck to get set up so that's why we're running two twins two silver, silver bangle to help out with the math you don't want to always have to discard four energy with lost burn to take a knockout on an ex slap a silver bangle on there and all of a sudden you all you need to do is discard three instead of four and that is very much what you want to do this deck does run into situations where you lost burn too many of your energy and you just can't attack you do not have the resources to attack anymore and you run out of steam and just lose. So resource management is incredibly important in this deck. You need to keep track of how many energy you have and how many energy you lost burned just because once they're lost burned, they're gone for good. You're not getting them back. Speaking of the energy, this is kind of a line that you can 100% tweak if you want to. Running two of the rescue energy just because if a Magnezone gets knocked out, and you have a Magnemite on the bench or something like that, you can immediately just play them right back down next turn because they'll go back to your hand. If you don't like running Rescue Energy and just run around, want to run more fire, then more power to you. I completely agree with that. I just did that because Magnezone is so important in this deck. Throwing a Rescue Energy on can keep it from being out of play for too long. Running nine of the Fire Energy, you want to run a lot of these just because of Inferno Fandango. And then also four Lightning Energy, just so that you can use Lost Burn and you're not like, oh crap, well I have plenty of energy, but I don't have any lightning. Well, running four lightning, so you should be able to get it more often than not. But anyway, I rambled for way too long. Let's just go ahead and see this deck in action. Alrighty, we have found one against uh, Martin Harder and uh, oh, we're running up against the Plasma deck. So this could get messy very quickly. And also this is a matchup where you do not want to really run Reshiram because it is an easy prize with a frost spear. I mean granted they have to have like they have to have four Deoxys, but in a plasma deck it's not as hard as it may seem to get that, or they just need three Deoxys and a laser or something, and we do win the coin flip actually, so that is phenomenal for us. If we can get like a turn two Magnezone and Embor, then we are just in a great position and Oh boy, we might get donked. We very well might get donked. This is bad. I mean, this is one of those instances where PCOM would be... I mean, it'd be better to have Ultra Ball than PCOM, but I mean, I still think overall PCOM's just better in this deck. But either way, um, well, we have a lone Magnemite. Let's see if it can last the turn. Uh, I don't... Oh, and I even... Well, I get the Lost Remover. Oh, thank the Lord. Okay. So, what I'm gonna do 
This is going to be a very, very intense turn. I'm going to attach and pass. I mean, that's that's how it goes. That's what I had to do. I mean, it, it required a lot of thought, and I really had to make sure that that was the right play. But I just had to attach and pass. Fortunately for me, my opponent starts with a Keldeo. So that's not the worst thing in the world. Uh, I mean, it could be... It could have been like a Thunderous or something that could knock me... Or a Thunderous or a Curum, both of whom could knock me out simply with a Frost Spear or a Ride and Knuckle with two Deoxys on the bench. And right now my opponent has to have a Float Stone, a Blender Prism, and a Plasma, and a Colrus Machine in order to knock me out this turn, which admittedly isn't too much. I mean, that's not a lot of things that you need in order to knock me out, which is kind of unnerving, but at the same time, it's... It's enough to where I think I might be able to survive the turn, potentially. Um, and okay, my opponent just has to Oak, so that is great. That means he didn't have much in his opening hand at all. So, honestly, I just need him to not have the Float Stone Blend and Chorus Machine, as well as two Deoxys, which, in a hand of six, is not outlandish. And, oh, sweet. Okay, so we might actually uh, get uh, double heads. Oh, boy. Well, um... If my opponent has a switch or a float stone, then I just lose. But the fact that he attached to the Curum makes me think that he didn't have it. Otherwise, he would just donk me with Ride Knuckle. And okay. Wow, this sucks. <laughs> I'm going to have to chorus for four because I did not draw anything at all. Oh boy. Whoa. Okay, I'm okay with this. Never mind. I take back everything I said. That my deck, I love you. I love you. I love you. I'm just going to go ahead and attach that, and can you, oh my god, that was the best Colrus for four I have seen in my entire life. So what I am going to immediately do is, uh, I'm going to Pcom away a Magnazone to grab, do I want to grab a Tepig, or do I just want to grab another Magnemite for the draw power? Um... I think the Embor can wait. My opponent has a hand of three cards. I'm not too particularly worried about that. So let's go ahead and play that Magnemite down. Just go ahead and... You know what? Let's just go ahead and Lost Burn, I think. Yeah, let's just Lost Burn one energy. It won't do much this way. I mean, I can just Lost Burn for two to knock out the Keldeo next turn or something like that. And wow, I mean, that was... <laughs> I cannot believe my luck on that top deck. I mean, I know... I'm one of the, I will say that I'm one of the, I think I'm one of the unluckiest people out there, but that chorus was the best chorus I could ever have hoped for. And okay, my opponent goes ahead and random receivers. He's going to junk arm. What's he junk arming for? For another random receiver? Is he just trying to get a Juniper as opposed to an N or something like that? Does he get it? Uh, of course he does. So unfortunately, we don't get a new hand off of my opponent and he's going to be able to well, I mean, I hope he doesn't get a float stone because at that point I'll be able to actually, I'll be able to actually set up a little more, and that's what I need. And yeah, I shouldn't have played that other silver bangle down just in case my opponent did draw that tool scrapper because yeah, now those silver bangles are just gone, and that is not a good thing. I am going to play one Reshiram down just because I think that that's. I mean, I'll, I'd be able to knock out a the Keldeo at this point. I'd be able to get some heavy damage off on, like, Thunderous and Deoxys to get good numbers for Lost Burn. Because a Lost Burn plus a... What was it? A Lost Burn plus a Blue Flare. Actually not... Oh, a single. Single discard. A single Lost Zone Lost Burn does get rid of a... Plus the Blue Flare does get rid of Deoxys and Thunderous and Keldeo. So Reshiram, while I said it's not too ridiculously good in this matchup, it still has its it still has good things going for it. And what I can do is just go ahead and promote the Reshiram, get the Magnazone out of harm's way. I 100% could have taken a knockout with Lost Burn right there, but I would have been left with no resources, and I'd rather just let my opponent, like, Give my opponent a little bit more, but then let the Reshiram take the hit. That way, Magnazone can come in clean and start taking knockouts once I do get completely set up. So let's go ahead and get a second Magnazone into play. Put one energy on the Reshiram just in case I need to use it. Go ahead and Magnetic draw for six cards. See what I can get. Uh, I get nothing. So I'm just going to go ahead and Oak. See if I can get some other cards that I can work with. And, well, um, I don't get much. 
that's not particularly good so what I am gonna go ahead and do is just junk arm get rid of the oak and the lightning energy because I have the because I have the energy retrieval in my hand and then go ahead and lost burn get rid of the energy off the curum I think yeah go ahead and get rid of that and go ahead and magnetic draw again and see this is why you have two magnezones kids because should not have gotten rid of that pecom oh well um so i am just going to go ahead and end my turn right there the only better setup i could have is if i had a tepig in play right now because then i think i could get an embor with a combination of magnetic draws and stuff like that but right now i have two of his prism energy in the discard pile that is what's keeping me in the game right now because otherwise he'd have a three energy cure empowered up and I would just kind of be up a creek without a paddle. The Keldeo is damaged. I would have liked to have taken a knockout on it with blue flare, but that is, I mean, that's fine with me. I'm okay with it uh, just because I do have two Magnezones set up in the background. I have two energy on one of them, including a lightning. I have, oh, I'm going to get a brand new hand. Let's see if I can get Tepigs. I haven't gotten any of those yet wow still didn't get any um do you see the colorless machines so that's that's a little bit worrisome but what i am oh that's beautiful what i can go ahead and do is pokemon collector go ahead and grab tepig 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 and i think just yeah i'll just go ahead and grab three tepig because i mean i have the junk arm for pokemon communication that's all i need to let's go ahead and play that guy down Play another one down just in case my opponent manages to reversal it in. And then play another energy onto the Reshiram, I think. Is that the play? Because I, I... Okay, so yeah, I think that's a play. I'm going to play another Magnemite down. Then I'm going to go ahead and Junk Arm, get rid of the Reshiram, the other Reshiram and the Tepig to grab... Yeah, I'm grabbing another Lost Remover. I'm going to try to put my opponent back even more because, I mean, I still have my two Magnetic Draws for the turn. So let's go ahead and get rid of another Prism Energy because on Curum, Plasma Energy don't really mean that much. But on but with uh, Prism Energy, actually allow it to be able to uh, do the Blizzard Burn, Frost Spear, all that. So as long as Curum has Plasma Energy on it, that's fine. It's the Prism and Blend that I don't want. And yeah, I'm just going to Outrage for 20. And, oh, that is a very strong chorus. That is a... Whew! That is a ridiculous 10-card chorus. I mean, I, I, I'd cyber high-five my opponent at that point. I know usually you only cyber high-five if you have a no-discard Juniper. But, I mean, if you chorus for 10, I think that is also worthy of a cyber high-five. And even though... Oh, he's even see the chorus machine. Oh, boy. So, that's a little bit scary. Um, well, okay, he fails the chorus machine. He must not have anything. And does he... Okay, he has a lightning energy in his discard pile. That is fine with me. I mean, I've lost removed, I think, three prism at this point, and then he's just going to go to power up the other Kyurem. Uh Yeah, three prism. That is beautiful. What I can do is go ahead and play that down. Play the Pig Knight down, because, I mean, if I draw into something to get, like, a rare candy, then I can, I can go ahead and just do that. And then I'm going to go ahead and Magnetic Draw for one. I'm being risky here just because, I mean, I have... I have the ability to do that because I have the luxury right now. And then, huh, so actually what I think I want to do is let this Curum go down. That way I can go ahead and twins for a rare candy or something like that. Yeah, let's just go ahead and get 70 damage on this Thunderous, put it in, put it in good range of Lost Burn. So that way I don't have to discard four energy instead. Now I only have to lost zone two not discard lost zone i apologize i only have to lost zone two energy with lost burn to be able to knock out this thunderous i only have to lost zone two energy to get rid of the keldeo i mean the cure will still be a problem and oh boy here we see the frozen city that's going to be problematic and means i have to be very strategic with how i play down my with how i play down my energy because otherwise that will just i mean that could single-handedly destroy me if I just play down my energy willy-nilly and don't really worry too much about the damage counters building up because I don't want the Magnezone to be put in range of Frost Spear, but I think I don't have a choice at this point. Um, so what I am going to do is just go ahead and play the Embor down, get uh, Lightning and a Fire into my hand. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to put the Magnezone into lost burn range 
I mean, that's that's what I have to do. And then let's go ahead and twins for. Yeah, you know what? Let's just go ahead and twins for a third Magnezone Prime. I mean, that's once this deck gets going, it is very, very, very good because of you have all the consistent draw. And then, yeah, put two damage on the Magnezone. I have to deal with this Kyurem as soon as possible. Let's go ahead and start. Let's try to spread out the damage a little bit with Inferno Fandango. Because unfortunately I'm attaching from my hand as opposed to the discard pile. So that way Frozen City is taking effect with each Inferno Fandango, which is bad. Let's go ahead and play another fire. You know what? Um. Yeah, let's just go ahead and put it on that Magnezone on the bench. Go ahead and Magnetic Draw. I need to be careful not to deck out with Magnetic Draw. But I mean, at this point, I want to get as many resources as possible. Um... Yeah, let's just go ahead and Lost Burn. I could Junk Arm, but at this point, I don't want to remove all of the energy. I I mean, I'd be removing all of the special energy with uh, with Lost Burn anyway, knocking out the Kyurem and taking a prize. So I'm just going to hold on to the Junk Arm, see if I can get it when I need it. My opponent is going to go into his Thunderous. He has to... Yeah, I mean, I'll be able to take a knockout on it with just a double lost burn or with a uh, two energy lost burn and then i'll have to be very very careful with my energy this game because curum takes three energy to get knocked out and this is where i mean i i kind of wish i had the other rush ram again but at the same time like i i did what i have to to get set up i have five energy in the lost zone i have to be careful that means i have 10 energy left i'm going to be discarding two with lost burn this turn well i'm going to be lost zoning two with lost zone with lost burn this turn meaning i will have eight to play with so that means i will have to take i will have to take a knockout on the keldeo in order to be able to win i think so what i am going to immediately first do is go ahead and switch um yeah let's just go ahead and switch into this magnezone get rid of that go ahead and let's go ahead and junk arm Junk arm for something. I think I'm going to junk arm for another loss remover. Get rid of the rare candy and the lightning energy. Um, oh, I can even get the silver bangle. Yeah, I think... You know what? I think the silver bangle is the play. That way I only have to loss zone a single light, a single energy against Keldia. Yeah, that's, the, that's going to be the play. So if I get the silver bangle, I only have to loss zone a single energy against Keldio in order to knock it out. That way I can... Uh, be a little bit more free with like knocking out a Deoxys or a Kyurem so I have a little bit more freedom so what I am going to do is actually start attaching to the Embor and the Tepig in order to be able to knock out the Thunderous I mean I only need a two energy loss burn but I still want to get as many energy into play as possible let's go ahead and magnetic draw I think I mean I know I have a very low deck size but um I don't know. Do I have? I think you know what? I have all the resources I need at this point. So what I am going to go ahead and do is just do a two energy loss burn, uh, loss yeah loss burn, knock out the thunderous, take two prizes, and I need. Oh, I got the computer search. There we go. So I need my reversal, which I can definitely just computer search for and then hopefully hit. If I can get heads on the reversal, then I will 100% win. I you know what? I actually think I'm in a very good spot because. Okay, so I have six energy in the lost zone. So that means, oh, I still have nine to play with. Wait, so that's three, three. Oh, I win. Yes. <laughs> Sweet. So I could have taken a no two knockouts on Kyurem and then a knockout on an EX with a silver bangled lo uh, lost burn. So that was awesome. I mean, I do have to say lost remover single-handedly kept me in this game and allowed me to win just the early disruption on my opponent's plasma deck was invaluable and turned out to actually win me the game because i was able to get set up fast enough to win and wow my opponent even got four heads and no tails so i mean just a little bit of luck in there but that chorus for four Go, will go down in history for me as the best chorus I have ever had because it got me Rare Candy Magnezone. And if I didn't, then I would have just 100% lost. But you guys can see that even against the more popular Legacy decks, this deck can still hold its own if you are able to set up and... I mean, that's a big 
if sometimes you just get steamrolled if your setup isn't good enough but if you can get a decent set enough and manage to set your opponent back even just one or two turns then you have the potential to steamroll them with inferno fandango and lost burn so i still think that this is a very very cool deck that is definitely worth trying out so thank you guys so much for watching leave your answer to the question of the day in the comment section below like comment subscribe all of that stuff and this is sticks signing out why not see you guys